The site of an ancient Celtic monastery on the Wenlock edge in Shropshire is home to Robert Hart's forest garden. Inspired by the urge to create a practical solution to world hunger whilst caring for his handicapped brother, Robert has carved out a haven of tranquility and abundance. His vision was to plant a miniature edible forest which could fulfill the needs of a healthy diet in beautiful surroundings. Some 30 years later, this mature garden in Welsh border country now serves as a model of what can be achieved in any backyard. Success depends on the understanding that useful plants can be grown in a succession of layers which imitate nature. The natural forest is regarded as having seven stories, as they say. The top story being uh, tall, uh, light demanding trees. The second story is short, uh, shade tolerant trees. The third story is the shrub level. The fourth, the herbaceous. The fifth comprises plants that spread horizontally. The sixth is the rhizosphere or root area. And the seventh is the uh, vertical layer comprising uh, climbers and creepers. Mahatma Gandhi has been the enduring inspiration for this vibrant greenery. His vision of a world order based on democratically organized, self-sustaining small communities is the guiding principle of Robert's work. But other influences are to be found amongst the trees which have both practical and spiritual significance. This tree is a Japanese ornamental plum dedicated to Toyohiko Kagawa, who was known as the Japanese Gandhi. He was a, a Christian evangelist and also a political and social reformer. He spent half his life in prison and the other half uh, advising government departments on such questions as slum clearance. Like Gandhi, he was vitally interested in all aspects of human welfare, and at one time he became concerned about erosion in the Japanese Alps, which had been caused by wholesale deforestation. He realized that the only basic answer was uh, a, a, a program of tree planting, and the only way to induce the hill farmers to plant trees was to uh, get them to plant fodder-bearing trees which would provide food for their animals as well as uh, halting erosion. He was thus, as far as one knows, the first man in history to see the link between conservation and food production. Since the death of his brother, Robert's time is now divided between writing and gardening. Together with former railway engineer Garnet Jones, he carries out the routine maintenance of the garden using techniques which have been researched and refined over the years. As far as possible, this whole garden is kept permanently mulched throughout the year. Mulching not only helps to build up the fertility of the soil and suppress weeds, but it provides ideal conditions for the soil organisms. That is, conditions that are relatively warm and dry in the winter and relatively cool and moist in the summer, which are the conditions which are relished by the living soil organisms such as earthworms and innumerable microfauna and microfungi which are the main sources of fertility. The high art of organic growing is producing really good compost 
and a really good compost comprises the widest possible variety of organic materials. Among the most useful of organic materials are woody plants, but obviously they take a very long time to rot down, so to convert them into compost, they have to be shredded. I have an excellent German shredding machine, and uh, woody materials such as uh, hedge cuttings are passed through that. That is another form of non-animal manure. The most striking features of the garden are its fertility and lack of pests and diseases. I don't use any chemicals on this place at all, but uh, use foliar sprays of seaweed, liquid comfrey, and liquid uh, nettles. These do not have the effect of destroying bugs and germs, but build up the natural disease and pest resistance of the, the plants. And also an extremely interesting subject, which is being studied, especially in the Far East, is the relationship between different plants. That is a study that is very much in its infancy in the West, the way that certain plants seem to benefit each other, stimulate each other's growth, and ward off each other's pests and diseases. At first it's not easy to identify the different layers in the lush density of the forest garden but a guided tour soon unravels the complexity to reveal an intriguing design. This shows four of the seven layers of the natural forest. First, this is an old pear tree which constitutes what is called the canopy, that is the highest layer of the, the seven layer of the natural forest. Then the low tree layer, this is a stag's horn sumac, which the Americans call a lemonade tree, which constitutes the low tree layer of shade tolerant short trees. Below that is the shrub layer, consisting of uh, currants, gooseberries, and other soft fruit bushes. This, for instance, is a black currant. Below that is the a uh, herbaceous layer consisting of herbs such as this uh, apple mint and that woundwort. Starting from the uh, shrub layer or low tree layer, this is a Japanese wine berry, a very choice berry which the Japanese make into wine. <laughs> um, below that, <coughs> Covering the ground is this, uh, which is also a member of the same raspberry, blackberry family, called Rubus nutans, which spreads horizontally by underground rhizomes, so it's liable to turn up all over the place, and it produces a small sweet berry. The sixth of the seven layers is the rhizosphere, or roots layer where are grown plants that are cultivated for their roots or tubers. This is a, a plant called mashua which comes from the Andes where the potatoes also come from and it's a kind of small potato with a nasturtium-like flower, a very attractive flower of the nasturtium family. This is an example of the seventh layer, or vertical layer, consisting of climbers. In this case, a nasturtium and a runner bean, which are about to climb this old wild cherry tree. 
Last year, I had a nasturtium and a runner bean craned up uh, an edible rowan, and they climbed almost to the top. It was strange to see runner beans in the branches of the, the rowan tree. Well, this is another example of the plants that uh, cover the vertical dimension, uh, originally called a Chinese gooseberry, but first imported into New Zealand, so it's become called a kiwi fruit. Um, it is a, a climber. Uh, Bill Mollison, the founder of uh, permaculture, told me that kiwi fruits climb to great heights up trees in Tasmania. So I'm hoping this will climb too. Robert's near neighbour is psychotherapist Virginia Smith. They're currently exploring the links between personal and planetary health. Something you said last week, Robert, about unlocking the fertility of the soil. Can you, can you repeat that? Well, you quoted some words by William Blake saying that the, the mind of man is a garden already planted and sown, and it's a question of cherishing the plants that are already there. And I think it applies really very much to the, uh, to, the, to the soil as well. They speak of uh, fertility being locked up in the soil. And one of the main aims of promoting fertility is fertility is not something that one puts on so much as releases that is already there. It's a question of uh, really allowing the activities of such things as soil roots and um, earthworms that make channels in the soil and therefore build up the circulating system so that the energy and fertility that's already in the soil is free to circulate. Nature's complex web of inputs, checks and balances are constantly encouraged minimizing the effects of drought and ensuring a constant cycle of fertility. The result is healthy crops which supply a local greengrocer and whole food restaurant. In imitation of the natural forest, clearings exist for more conventional growing. Sun-loving plants can thrive here. Thousand-head kale and alexanders grow alongside broad beans, potatoes and other well-known vegetables. Nearby is Robert's most recent innovation of a forest garden in miniature, which demonstrates the degree of maturity that can be achieved in under four years. It's largely a mixture of fruit trees, fruit bushes and herbs. At one end is a pea tree whose edible pods form an important part of the diet in Siberia. To the untrained eye, the profusion of exotic species thriving on Robert's land seems bewildering. However, it's relatively easy to create a backyard forest garden using familiar trees and plants. The advice I give to anyone who asks me how to start a forest garden from scratch is to plant an orchard of standard fruit trees at recommended intervals, that is about 20 feet each way then plant dwarf trees in midway between the standard trees, plant fruit bushes, currants and gooseberries, in between the trees, and plant herbs and perennial vegetables on the, uh, on the ground level. Once it's established, the main work is uh, cutting back plants that try to encroach on each other, which is something that has to be done pretty well every day during the growing season, and keeping the soil well mulched, thus suppressing weeds and building up the fertility. I think it's possible to say that it is 
a system combining maximum output for minimum labor. Robert Hart has now successfully pioneered temperate forest gardening for 30 years. Through his writing and media appearances, he has inspired many others to take up the challenge of sustainable food production.